In question number three, we're asked to find the volume of the solid formed when the region bounded by f of x equals x and g of x equals x squared are revolved about the line y equals 1. So this time, the axis of revolution is y equals 1. It's up here. I've already got the graph drawn for you, and I've included the axis of revolution. These two functions, by the way, are the same functions that were used in sample questions 1 and 2. So the trick is going to be to come up with expressions for the outer radius and the inner radius. So I'm going to start by focusing on the outer radius, which means I'm going to grab my red pen, and I'm going to place the tip on the axis of revolution. And I'm going to project straight down to the farthest curve. Then I'm going to keep going until the x-axis, but I'm going to make this part dotted. Now this point here I'm going to call x comma g of x, which means that this bottom portion here is g of x, and from here to here is one unit, which means that this solid red segment is going to be the difference between one and g of x. So our outer radius is going to be one minus g of x. Now I'm going to focus my attention on the inner radius. So I'm going to grab my green pen and I'm going to place it on the axis of revolution, y equals 1. And I'm going to project straight down, this time stopping when I get to the nearer of the two curves. And I'm going to continue with a dotted line until I get to the x-axis. Now this point right here is going to be called x comma f of x. And the portion that's dotted is going to be called f of x. That's because to get there, to get to this point, we're going to start at the origin and we're going to go over x and we're going to go up f of x. But we have to bear in mind that the distance from the x-axis to the line y equals 1 is 1 unit. And what I really need to know is this solid green segment. So this solid green segment is going to be the difference between 1 and f of x. So our little r is going to be 1 minus f of x. And now I'm going to use the volume formula, which is written up at the top of the slide as a reminder, and I'm going to insert what I know. So volume equals pi. Our representative rectangles, or our representative radii, are perpendicular to the x-axis, which makes this a dx problem. Our low x is 0. Our high x is 1. Our outer radius is 1 minus g of x, which I'll then square. And then I'm going to subtract from that the inner radius squared. So 1 minus f of x quantity squared. So this would be the setup in order to find the volume of this region if revolved about the line y equals 1. Let's go on to our final example. In number four, we're asked to find the volume of the solid formed when the region determined by g of x equals x squared, x equals zero, and y equals one are revolved about the line x equals one. So the first thing that I observe is that our axis of rotation is x equals one. So this time our axis of rotation is vertical. And I've gone ahead and drawn that in for you. It's right here, it's this dotted line, x equals one, and I've indicated the rotation with this little arrow that has a loop attached to it. So our regions are g of x, which is this parabola here, the line x equals 0, which is really just this little piece right here, and the line y equals 1, which is the upper piece here. And we're taking this region and we're revolving it about the line x equals 1. So in the end, we're going to get something that looks a little bit like this. This is what a cross section of this revolution would look like, this solid. And we'll actually draw the whole thing tomorrow in class, but this is just giving you a sense of what's going on here. So I'm going to need an expression for the outer radius and the inner radius. So what's interesting here is that our, because our axis of revolution is vertical, this is going to be a dy problem. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my volume formula, or at least start to set it up. Volume equals pi, definite integral, I'll leave a lot of space for our expressions for the radii. It's going to be a dy problem because our axis of revolution is vertical, 
which means we're going to need a low y here and we're going to need a high y up here. And on this diagram, our low y is 0 and our high y is 1. So we've got a 0 here and a 1 here. What's missing are expressions for our radius. So let's start with the uh, outer radius. To, to figure out what this is, I'm going to place my pen on the axis of revolution. And I'm going to extend sideways to the left until I reach the farthest edge of this region. Now, no matter where I place this along this axis of revolution, it's always going to be 1. From here to here is 1 if I'm at the bottom. If I'm in the middle, this red is going to be 1. And if I'm at the top, it's going to be 1. So it seems to me that no matter where I am between 0 and 1, the outer radius is going to be 1. I'm going to actually go ahead and put that in here. So I'm going to do the outer radius squared. And now the inner radius, I'll grab my green pen. I'm going to place it on the axis of revolution. And this time I'm going to project over to the left until I get to the nearer of the two curves, which would be this one right here. And I'm going to continue all the way to the outside with a dotted line. And I'm going to think about what this point would be. This point would be x, y. So I'm going to come down here where there's a little more room. This is x, y, which means that this dotted portion here is x. Now if the whole span from the blue line to the axis of revolution is 1, and this portion is x, we can describe the solid green portion as 1 minus x. So if this dotted portion is x and the whole span is 1, then this is going to be 1 minus x. So our little r is going to be 1 minus x. Now we have, we have a little bit of a problem because if I put 1 minus x here, I'm going to have a conflict in the variables. Because we're classifying this as a dy problem, all of the variables in here should be y, not x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that function, which is y equals x squared, and I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And if I do that, I get the square root of y is equal to x. So instead of thinking of the smaller or inner radius as 1 minus x, I'm going to think of little r as 1 minus root y. And I'm going to plug that into the formula, 1 minus root y. And of course, I'm going to square it because it's big R squared minus little r squared. And now we have agreement in our variables. So right here we have the expression for finding the volume of the solid formed when this region is rotated about the line x equals 1. It's our one example in which the axis of revolution was vertical, which classified it as a dy problem.